Hi, in this video I'll be showing you this. It's the Blomberg LTK38030G condenser drive. What I want to do today is to show you around the drive some of the features and benefits that it offers. Just for a start, I would appreciate it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just give us a quick thumbs up. So first of all, obviously you can see this is the graphite model. There is a sister model to this, which is in white. Uh, also, there are different load size models in white uh, and graphite as well. Uh, but all I want to do is, first of all, I want to show you the dimensions of the dryer. Uh, it is something to try and point out because not all dryers are the same size. Uh, things like the, the width and the height tend to be pretty standard. So you're looking around 60 centimeters wide or around 23 and a half inches width. And as far as the height, so you're looking around 85 centimeters or just under 33 and a half inches. But the main thing that can vary is the depth of the appliance. And on this one, to the front lip here, you're looking around 51 centimeters or just over 20 inches. Or if you want to go to the very front to just covering the door, then you're looking at 22 inches or 56 centimeters. So as I say in a lot of my videos, just have a quick measure up before you buy the appliance to make sure it'll fit in. So you can see, considering all it wants to do is to dry the clothes, you've actually got a huge range of options around here. Um, first of all, the on and off is via the dial. Uh, quite a few appliances now have an on and off switch or a button, uh, but clearly Blomberg have decided to uh, use the dial as the on and off, which is not a problem. Uh, personally, I quite like it like that. Uh, but what I want to do is I just want to take you through some of the programs and what they, what they do. Uh, you'll notice that the display on here is a really nice clear LED display. Uh, it's not the biggest numbers on the market. Uh, there are some that are slightly bigger than that. Uh, but I would like it where it's the like the white LED or light blue, um, mainly because I think it's a lot easier to read. There are some companies that still insist on using a red display, and I must say it's not quite as easy to read as the white. Uh, but first of all, um, as I say, I'll quickly run through some of the programs. The the cotton program is mainly for well, as it says, you you got your heat resistant cotton textiles. And for this program, you can put a full eight kilograms in. Now, what I mean by that is that not all of the programs have you got the ability to put a full eight kilogram load into it. Uh, it's something which some people tend to get a little bit confused by, uh, but what I'll try and do is to mention on each program as to the maximum capacity that you can put in. So as I say, the cottons, you can put the full eight kilograms. Cottons Eco, uh, this, the main difference is it dries single layer casual cotton textiles in the most economical way. Now you will notice each time I change the program that the time will change on here. Now this is an initial time of drying. What you will find is that during the drying process this will change. And the main reason for that is the, this Blombo dryer has something called sensor dry. What I mean by sensor dry is that the tumble dryer will measure the moisture content within the clothes and it will adjust the time of the program according to that. So if you only put say a couple of items in that are that you've spun quite well in your washing machine, clearly it's not going to need as long to dry as if you're putting a full load in and you've got a low spin speed on your machine because the clothes that you're putting in will be slightly damper and that will make a huge difference to the drying time. And that's the advantage of sensor dry. It's a brilliant piece of technology. Uh, to be fair, most tumble dryers have got it. Uh, it's pretty much the very basic ones that don't, uh, but it's something that I always recommend to customers. But that's the, the Cotton Eco program. Next one is the synthetics. Now this one you can only dry up to four kilograms. Uh, and as I said, it's for your synthetic textiles mix program. So you mainly use this program for non-pigmenting synthetics and cotton laundry so you can dry all those together. And again, that's up to four kilograms. The next one is towels. So that's things like kitchen towels, bath towels, hand towels. Then you've got gentle care uh, with that one. Sorry, I should have mentioned the previous one was a five kilogram load. Um, as you come around to gentle care, that's a maximum of two kilogram load. So that's for delicate items. Um, things like uh, silk blouses, thin underwear, um, anything you think you might not put in a dryer. That's where the gentle care is good. Sports program, again, that's a four kilogram load. Um, and that's mainly for single layer sportswear. Uh, things like the football shirts, 
which again, some people will think, well, I'm not really going to put them in the dryer. You know, they might shrink. But in this, for this program, then that's ideal. Uh, then you've got freshen up. So this is a 10 minute program. And all this will do is it just blows hot air through the dryer, through the, through the drum. And it's really a freshen up program so that if you've been out, for example, in say a smoky atmosphere, um, or if, if your jacket that you've got just smells slightly, but it doesn't need washing, um, then rather than hanging it out on the line, which, well, at the moment here in the UK, the weather is terrible. Um, I'm recording this video, it's about seven o'clock in the morning, and it's absolutely chucking it down outside. So certainly wouldn't be hanging any clothes out. But in this scenario, then just pop it in, pop it in the freshen up program, and then for 10 minutes, and then away you go. You've got a timer program. Now this is a really good option as well. So what you can do is you can change the time manually. And I know some people are thinking, well, I've got sensor drying here. Why do I need timer program? And that goes up to two hours, 40 minutes. I'll just show you that again. So once you get up to 2.30, 2.40, and then it reverts back to 10 minutes. And for some people, what you want to do is you want to force a certain time that the clothes are in the dryer. Now, a good example of this, at home, what I tend to do is when I've done the washing, as long as I've got time, then I'll try and hang clothes out on an error first. And what that will do is that will get rid of the majority of the moisture within the clothes. I'll leave them, to be fair, it could be around a day, uh, leave them on an error to majority dry. And then once they're almost dry, then I'll put them in a tumble dryer and I will set a manual timer, normally for around 20 or 30 minutes. Um, and what that will do is that will just dry them off. And for things like shirts, it, uh, to be honest, it can get rid of a lot of the creases. Uh, also for things like towels, it will just give them the, the fluffiness back. Uh, I must admit, I'm not too keen on a, a scratchy towel where you just had it out to dry. Um, how interest, how do you like your towels? Random question of the day. Um, do you like your tails where you just hang them out on the line, they come in, they're stiff, they're scratchy, um, or do you like them nice and fluffy where you've put them in the dryer? Personally, I quite like it, uh, quite like it where it's been in the dryer, a bit fluffier. But anyway, that's where the timer program is really good. Um, and sorry, what I was saying was that once I've put the clothes in, set the timer, um, then it will just dry for the either 20 or 30 minutes for me. And the main reason I can't use a standard program, like say the cotton program, is that everything might not, or might be dry enough for the sensors. So it wouldn't really work in that scenario. The next one is the jeans program. That's a maximum of four kilograms. And again, that for things like denim, uh, trousers, skirts, shirts. Uh, then you've got the outdoor. Uh, that's a maximum of two kilograms. Uh, that's for your multi-layer textile products. As you go on to the daily program, then, well, I'll just show you this. I am cheating a little bit. I'm reverting to the instructions. Uh, I must admit, the instructions here are really good. Uh, it does give you a brief description as to what each program will do. That doesn't help when I drop the instructions. Anyway, I will carry on. I've got them back. So as we go on to the daily program, then that's a maximum of four kilograms. That's where you can dry both the cotton and synthetic laundry items together. Uh, for things like sports and fitness clothes, they might be dried in that, in, for that program. Then you go to the shirts program. It's a smaller load. It's only around one and a half kilograms. And what this will do is this will dry the shirts in a more sensitive manner. Uh, and basically it will cause less creasing and it's easier to iron. That's what I was mentioning earlier about ironing some of the shirts I've got. Uh, as you go to the next one, you've got the Express. Uh, that's really for a very small load, because you'll see on here, it's showing a really short time. Uh, that's ideally used for, say, two shirts, uh, when you want them ready for ironing. So it's a maximum of half a kilogram. So it's only really a very, very small load. Um, I know I've mentioned about the maximum load sizes that you can put in. Uh, clearly for a lot of people, you're not going to go and weigh your clothes before you put them in. So I suppose there is a, quite a lot of guesswork in there because the tumble dryer is not telling you the load that you're putting in. 
Uh, but the only thing I would say is if you were to put, so for example, if I put on this program, if you put say half a load in of four kilograms in a load that should be half a kilogram, it will still dry, but it will just take a huge amount longer. You're not gonna force it to dry everything in 15 minutes. It doesn't work that way around. All that will happen is it will just extend the program until everything is finished. The ne next one is the hygiene program. So this is a long-term program that you can use for clothes, things like baby clothes, towels, underwear, that require hygiene. Um, so hygiene is provided with high temperature, so it's especially suitable for dura durable fabrics. Uh, I will be honest, I'm actually reading this from the instructions. Uh, and this program is actually identified and approved by England's British Foundation or Allergy UK. So that's, that's a really good, a really good option on the dryer. Uh, and this has a maximum load of up to five kilograms as well. And then as you go back up to the top, then you switch the dryer off. So now I've finished the programs, then you've got a, an array of different options at the bottom here. The first one to show you is the dryness level. And what this will do is this gives you the option to select how dry you want the clothes. Uh, now I know, again, some of you might be thinking, well, uh, the sensor dryer will sort this out for me. But what you can do is you can actually select whether you want it a little bit drier or not than the standard setting within the dryer. Now the first one is what they call like a, a hanger dry. Then you've got the hanger dry plus, hanger dry plus plus, and then it reverts back to iron dry. Now iron dry, again, is a, it's a really good feature. And what it will do is it will leave everything slightly damp so that you can take the shirts out. Um, so if, you, if you're doing say a load of shirts or blouses, then you can take them out, they'll be slightly damp, and then you can hang them up and they are ideal for the ironing process. I say it's a process, I must admit I hate ironing not something I really enjoy. Uh, I know some people do enjoy it for, for whatever reason. Uh, but you can see the time on here will change depending on the dryness level that you select. So it goes 1 hour 47, 2.30, 2.36, 2.42. Next option on here is the anti-creasing option. Uh, now it doesn't change the time of the program. It doesn't add anything on. Uh, but all it will do, really as it says, it's an anti-crease. So as it gets towards the end of the program, then it will just rotate uh, on the odd occasion, uh, I will be completely honest, I don't know exactly how often it is, uh, but that you can just really help uh, to avoid the creasing of the clothes. Next one is the buzzer. So if you want it to buzz at the end of the program, then you just leave it on. If you don't, just switch it off. So much easier. Uh, some tumble dryers, you need to go into the back menus to change that kind of option. So I'm really pleased that Blomberg just put it on the front because on the whole, people either want it on or off. Personally, I think I leave it on, because what I want to do is I want to know when the drying process has finished. I don't like the clothes to be in there too much longer, because I do find that they can get creased quite easily. Low temperature option. Never assume that a tumble dryer has got a high and a low. Uh, not all tumble dryers have got that option, but I'm glad that uh, Blomberg have put it on here. So you've got the low temperature and then the high temperature. Clearly, if you're going to dry it under low temperature, then the whole drying process will normally take a little bit longer, but it can look after the fabrics a bit better. Uh, time of program, I've already covered that. The ending in, so this is a time delay option. And what this enables you to do is to delay the start of the program. And this is really good if you've got things like Economy 7, where you've got cheap electricity during the night, put my teeth back in and you can delay it for up to 24 hours, and then it just reverts back to the standard time of the program. Then you've got a drum light, so you can actually switch it on or off. Let me just, tell you what, let me just show you this. So you've got start and pause on the right hand side here. Uh, if I just move the camera down a little bit, then you can see that you've actually got the drum light. So I'll press that, turn it off, and then turn it on. Now that's very rare. Not many manufacturers will give the ability to turn the light on and off. Just while I'm on the subject of the drum light, I'll just show you inside the drum. Now, as far as the uh, porthole on this, I'll just measure it for you. So it is 30, well, just over 38 centimeters, around 15 inches wide. And then the height of it, you're looking around 32 centimeters. 
uh, or around 12 and a half inches. Uh, so that's a really good size porthole, considering it's only an eight kilogram size capacity. Uh, most of the size of portholes um, on a lot of other dryers tend to be for much bigger capacity. So I'm really pleased that Blomberg have, have done that. Uh, you have got the filter inside here, so that's nice and easy to take out. And then when you need to clean the fluff out, just open that and then click that back together. That drops back in. As I mentioned, you've got the drum light in there, which is, I think it's something that I suppose not many people think about when you're initially buying a tumble dryer, but it can be really useful, especially on uh, bigger capacity appliances. Uh, that can be a really good option, but if you want to turn the drum light off, then just press the button there. Uh, you've got the condenser unit at the bottom here. So this is the some of the, the workings of it. This is really important to keep clean. Uh, what you will find is if you don't clean it on a regular basis, then the performance of the dryer won't be that great. And that's normally one of the first things that uh, will be questioned. If, if you were to ring the service center and say that it's not drying properly, then they'll ask you, have you cleaned the condenser unit? Uh, best way to do that is either to use something like a, a paintbrush or with something like that, you can actually just put it into a sink or a bath um, and just run water through it as well. That's uh, another good option. Clearly at some point, you're going to need to empty the water out of the dryer. Now there are actually two ways you can do this. The first one, and I suppose the most common way that people will empty the water is using the tank at the top. Uh, it's just got the handle on the front and then you just, all you do is you just go to the sink uh, or a drain and just go and empty the water out. Uh, you will have an indicator on the front, so there will be an indicator to show you when to do it. Uh, the other option is that you can actually use this. This is a cheeky little drain hose. And what you can do is you can actually, on the back of the dryer, I'll just show you in a moment. So on the back of the tumble dryer, you can attach that. And rather than having to use the drawer, you can actually drain the water out into a waste outlet. So if you've got it next to, a, say, a washing machine, uh, there is actually a matching washing machine that Blomberg make in this graphite colour, which is, looks really nice together. Uh, but if you've got it next to a, a waste outlet, then personally, I'd just use that. It just saves having to worry about uh, emptying the container all the time. Uh, what you'll also find is there's nothing more frustrating than if you, if you don't empty the container and if you come along several hours later, especially if you use things like the time delay option, and if you find that the container's full of water uh, and you've not, the whole drying process hasn't finished, that gets really frustrating. I've had that in the past. Uh, so what I try and do is with my dryer at home, I do try and connect it up to, or have connected it up to a drain outlet. And that's just a, another option for you. So I'll just show you around the back of the dryer. Uh, first of all, you can see that you've got the mains cable at the top left here. Uh, another common question I get asked on a lot of, a lot of tumble dryer videos is the spongy bit on the back, the insulation, should I take that off? And the answer is always no, just leave it in place. Uh, that's what the manufacturer have decided to put on. Uh, you will find if it's pushed up against a wall, uh, which it shouldn't really be, then that can just really, really help with the, I suppose, the sound level of it. Uh, it's, it's always best to leave a bit of space at the back. That's the same with any tumble dryer. Uh, but the thing I was mentioning earlier was the drain hose. Now that's at the bottom here. If you do want to connect up the drain hose, that one. So if you wanted to connect that up, then all you need to do is just pull this little hose out and attach that hose at the back here. That's a really easy process, only takes a moment. And then once you've got that in place, you just connect that into your waste outlet. I'll just show you the energy label. As you can see, it's a B energy rating. So I will be honest, it's not the most energy efficient product on the market, uh, but you will find for a condenser dryer, then that's almost as good as it gets before you go into the realms of heat pump dryers. Now, heat pump will always be a better option as far as the amount of electricity and energy that they use, but they will be more expensive to buy in the first place. Also, the main disadvantage of a heat pump tumble dryer is if you're going to use it in a cold atmosphere, so if it's, say, outside in a shed or a garage, then heat pump dryers are not really recommended. Uh, so I don't want to put you off a heat pump, that's really another conversation, but all I was doing, I, was, I suppose I'm 
justifying the the B energy rating on here, saying that actually for this kind of product it's not too bad. Uh, but 561 kilowatt hours per annum, uh, you can just see that it's a, an 8 kilogram load as well. If you think about buying one of these dryers, I have provided a link below to show you where to get one at a competitive price. Hope you enjoyed this quick video on the Blomberg LTK28030G condenser dryer. Please give us a thumbs up on my YouTube video. Click subscribe, leave any comments below. I'd always ask for comments, whether it's good or bad, about the video. If you've come here to uh, I suppose find some information out and if I've not covered it if you've got any questions on the product then just pop it in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Also if you have got a Blomberg tumble dryer it doesn't have to be the condenser one could be one of the vented or heat pump dryers let me know what you think about it just be honest because I always appreciate the feedback. Thanks for watching.